Hello there one and all, this is NDM here, welcoming you back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. Okay, so in the last episode, we uh, did some more jobs and unsuccessfully managed to progress on with the story due to the lack of cutscenes. But, um, in this episode I guess we're going to continue on with doing some more jobs and, th and such. Um, guys, I did do jobs in the last episode, I did a buttload of jobs and nothing happened. No cutscene, no nothing. So, hopefully this time we get more successful. And why do I have two Poochiennas? Uh, excuse me. I'm going to have to get one of those out. Um, actually, no. To be honest with you, I am going to keep two Poochiennas because one of them can evolve into a Mightyena. And then you can just leave the Poochiena. So then you'll have the Mightyena and the Poochiena. Uh, so yeah, I'll do that. And just That'll be fine. No need to make the change there. Huh. Because you never know, I might end up using a Poochiena for some reason and then evolve it into a Mightyena. Um, but for now, we're just going to get a lucky out and uh, check out the bulletin board as usual and see if there are any jobs available. Same old, same old routine. Going through the motions and trying to get things done here. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to check the shop first and see if they've got anything interesting here that's worth buying. Okay, well, our inventory is apparently full and we need to get rid of some stuff. If there is anything worth getting rid of, which... No, there isn't actually. We're pretty well tooled up. We have plenty of apples, plenty of orange berries, plenty of max elixirs. Yeah, we're fine. No, I don't need to worry about any of that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go check out the bulletin board. And see what we've got here. Uh, the Great Canyon, Lapis Cave. Uh, that sounds pretty intriguing. Um, yeah, you know what? We're going to do Lapis Cave because Lapis Cave is actually quite a short dungeon for what it's worth. As even though we have to go down right down to the twelfth floor, it's not going to be that much of a problem getting down there. Uh, like I say, the Pokemon are weak, so it's not going to be much of a problem. And hopefully this will be the, mi the mission that actually triggers the next cutscene in the story where we find out what's happened to Alakazam in, um, in the, well, wherever Groudon is. I'm not going to go ahead and spoil what area Groudon actually is in because uh, that's spoilery and I'm not that kind of person to go ahead and give information like that to ruin the plot. And so I haven't done so throughout this whole entire Let's Play, and I'm not going to start doing it now, so. I like it grew to level 15, sweet. And he got quite a lot of good stats there from what I saw. Um, got, got a little glimpse of what stats he gained. Uh, no, I don't want Gravel Rock, that's the last thing I want. <laughs> I'd rather have poop in a toilet seat. In a toilet, in a toilet, yeah, not in a toilet seat, what? <laughs> I'd rather have poop in a toilet bowl than uh, have gravel rock, because I don't use gravel rock. It's pointless and useless, as I've already explained before, and I'm not going to go into detail about that either. I guess gravel rock can actually help you out in some situations, like if you, if you have no source of max elixirs and you know you want to actually do some really good physical damage I guess a gravel rock would be good in that sense but you wouldn't use a gravel rock if you are really well tooled up on max elixirs which most of the time you are anyway because you know it's obvious that if you're going into a larger dungeon you are going to become prepared and equipped with the essentials like Max Elixirs, Oran Berries and such. So Gravel Rock is kind of useless. It's, it is useful if you run out of Max Elixirs, but like I say, most of the time you will have Max Elixirs because you will come to dungeons equipped with stuff like that. Huh. I mean, I know I would. I wouldn't go into a dungeon without being well tooled up with good equipment. I always make sure that I have everything I need before I go in. And yeah, today's actually been a very crappy day for me, to be honest with you. I, 
I guess recording Kirby made things a lot better because, yeah, I finished. Oh. oh, well, actually, no, I am getting Kirby out today, and Kirby will probably be the first video I get out, so I guess it's okay to announce it. But yeah, Kirby, uh, Kirby in Dreamland is going to be my next LP. I've recorded it. I recorded the last episode actually, and I'm getting the first episode of it out today. So it goes to show how short the game is. I'm not going to say how many parts there are in total, but um, you'll find that out once the game is fully uploaded. But anyway, on to the main event of what I was actually trying to go ahead and explain. Um, today has been a very crappy day for me because I have... I had to get up really early today. I had to... We had a long j car journey um, up north of the country and... Uh, Took us two hours to get there. Well, two well either two two and a half hours or nearly three hours to get there. And then we had and then we were going to go to a game museum, but the game museum was closed. So we didn't know that because there was no information whatsoever that it was open because it's like so far up north. We don't know because we're not. Well, I'm not relative to where the game museum is. So I go there and look at, we go there and look at the time of when it's open and it's only open on a Friday, a Sunday and, no, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's not open on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and today is Monday. So we went up there on a Monday and it was closed. So, <laughs> yeah, we uh, wasted our whole day in the car driving around for two hours and nearly three hours. And then we had to do the same thing to get back home. So it was pretty crappy. I mean, I did get something out of it. I did get a game. I got Rayman Raving Rabbits for the Wii, which is a totally awesome game. Uh, I got that for only £7, so well, it wasn't that expensive. Yeah. I used to have it. It's not like I've not played the game before. I have had it. Uh, like, uh, like I said, I think I said in one of my older videos that I got a Wii in 2006 when it came out and then I got Rayman Raven Rabbits with the Wii when it came out because Rayman Raven Rabbits was one of the launch titles for the Wii and then obviously I got Zelda Twilight Princess so I can't miss out on any of that <laughs> I needed to get myself Twilight Princess otherwise my life wouldn't be worth shit <laughs> if I didn't get that game because I tell you, Twilight Princess is one of my favorite sort of games, besides Majora's Mask. Um, I kind of like the dark side to the Zelda games because it gives it a more awesome feeling, and the story is a lot more uh, gripping. Because I know Majora's Mask had a different antagonist to what Twilight Princess did, because Twilight Princess had the regular old Ganondorf, but Majora's Mask had the Skull Kid and the Majora's Mask, which made the game a lot more different to what we've previously seen in other Zelda games before Majora's Mask. <clears throat> but I do like the dark side of the Zelda games. Um, I guess that's why I'm kind of a fan of A Link to the Past, actually, because A Link to the Past has that kind of darky um, atmosphere. And it's a, a Link to the Past is probably one of the most addicting Zelda games, actually. Uh, when I first played that game, I was hooked. And once I beat the game, I, I started it straight. I started it again straight after I beat it. <laughs> and uh, I did that about four times in a row. Beat a Link to the Past four times in a row. But Link to the Past was a really hard Zelda game. It, I only recently beat it last year, so that shows you how long it's taken me to beat it. But I never had the SNES cartridge. I always had it on the Game Boy, so I played it on the Game Boy. And uh, the one with the Four Swords bonus game on it. Um, I don't know when that came out. I think it was 2004. Like, I know it was around about the time when Minish Cap came out, because that's when it, it all kicked off. Uh, it, that's what kicked off the Minish Cap series and, you know, Four Swords Adventures on GameCube. 
So for a bonus game, it did influence a lot of other games to be created on the GameCube and the Game Boy. Uh, Minish Cap being one of them, and Four Swords Adventures being the other one. I've never beat Four Sword Adventures, uh, I will say that now. <laughs> That's probably one of the only Zelda games I've not beaten apart from Zelda 2 uh, Adventure Link. Because that game is really hard. Uh, a lot harder than Zelda 1. And I, I know I complained in my Zelda 1 LP how hard that game was going through it. Uh, but trust me, it's nowhere near as hard as <laughs> Zelda 2. In terms of difficulty, like how difficult it is to kill enemies, not in terms of difficulty on how it's like puzzle solving, because Zelda is mostly revolved around puzzle solving. And if you want a really hard puzzle solving Zelda game, go for Majora's Mask. If you're playing it for the first time, that game is hard as hell. And it's impossible to beat without a guide, I would say so. Because a lot of the stuff in that game is really cryptic. And uh, I had to use a guide for it. I will admit that I have not beat Majora's Mask um, on my first time without using a guide, so... The, f the 3DS remake is actually quite good. I actually enjoyed the 3DS remake of Majora's Mask a lot more than I did with the 3DS remake of Ocarina of Time. I uh, know, I think they added a lot more gadgets into Majora's Mask, like there was a lot more variety to what you can do and stuff in that game than what there was in uh, Ocarina of Time, because Ocarina of Time was just a basic straightforward remake, like they didn't make any alterations to the game whatsoever, but Majora's Mask, they actually put some new stuff in it, they added uh, different quests. There was an extra bonus empty bottle that you could get from doing a special hidden quest that wasn't included in the N64 version. And uh, you had, and the bomber's notebook was more extended in uh, in the 3DS remake. That there was a lot more people that you could get in your book, whereas in Majora's Mask on the N64 you were only li only limited to 20 people, I think it was, in the notebook on the M64. So yeah, they did add quite a lot of new stuff to it, and it's worth getting, in my opinion. Um, it's a lot more worth getting than what Ocarina of Time is on the, on the 3DS. So, yeah, if you want a good... Um, remake, remade Zelda game, that's definitely the one to go for. I heard that, I heard some rumours, and I'm saying rumours, don't go getting all like hyped up or, any, or anything like that. I have heard rumours that they are remaking a Twilight Princess, um, yeah, they are remaking Twilight Princess on 3DS, the new 3DS. Um, so it's been rumoured, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I personally don't think it is going to happen, but if it does, it would be pretty cool because, you know, they made the port on the GameCube, so it is possible. Like, the game wasn't all just, you know, motion controls. Um, Skyward Sword is more motion controlled than what uh, Twilight Princess was because Twilight Princess was made for the GameCube, and I think it came out for the GameCube first, actually, before it came out on the Wii. But I think Twilight Princess on the GameCube is a lot more rare than what it is on the Wii, because I see Twilight Princess on the Wii everywhere. Honestly, I do. I see it everywhere. In every game store, even today, I see it. <laughs> Just sat there. So, and I've never really... I think I've only came across the GameCube version of Twilight Princess once. And uh, that was in one of the game stores. So, um, yeah, GameCube Twilight Princess is rare, it, uh, so, well, from what I've seen, I'm not going to say that it's true that it's rare, because it might not be, I just might have bad luck, but, <laughs> um, but if I had a choice to choose which version I would pick, the Wii version or the GameCube version, I'd say the Wii version because I'm a lot more accustomed to it. 
Like if I started playing it on the GameCube, I'd start thinking that I need to throw the remote and I'll just launch it across this across the room and I go crash into the TV screen. <laughs> And then there'll be a massive hole, a massive GameCube controller hole <laughs> through my TV screen. So there, there you go. Um, <clears throat> damn it, my throat has really been killing me this weekend, I tell you. Hay fever's acting up again, and uh, I've been taking some tablets for it. So that's what I need to do, just keep on taking tablets. Make things better. Oh shit! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No freaking way. Oh, I was commentating and I just got distracted, but we're on B13, we're supposed to be on B12. I knew it would happen at some point, I just knew it. I, I just absent-mindedly go down to the next floor without even paying any attention whatsoever. See, 12F, we screwed it up. Okay, I'm gonna meet you guys at 12F of the Lapis Cave, because I ain't going through this again with you. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, so we have actually made it back to the destination floor. Thank God for that. Alright, okay, so let's actually rescue the Pokemon that we're actually supposed to be rescuing and not abandon the poor guy. <laughs> right, so let's rescue Nuzleaf and get the hell out of here. Hold still, so I can talk to you. Uh, stop. Please, stop moving. Stop! I command you! Huh? Yes, Nuzleaf was found. Use the rescue team badge to save Nuzleaf. Um, yep, so that's that done. Hopefully that will be the mission that will get us further. Uh, yes, I would like to leave. I accidentally clicked no. Thank you for rescuing me. Here's your reward. The promised brown gummy. Uh, yeah, that'll go back into storage. Okay, so let's see what's going on now then. Hopefully we can... I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. No clue. Ah, here we go, the next morning, so that's something. Um, we definitely triggered the next part of the game. Oh, another earthquake. Oh, wow, another earthquake. Yeah, yeah, I, I read your mind, Pikachu. I knew exactly what you was going to say. I guess it settled down. There have been a lot of earthquake, earthquakes lately. Yeah, indeed there have. Oh, hi, you were up early, Lewis. Did you notice the earthquake earlier? It's hard to get decent sleep when there are so many earthquakes. Hey! Hey! Listen! Hey! Oh, Lumbre, what's the matter? We need you at the square. Everyone's gathering there. Is there something wrong? I'm not really sure. Shiftry is calling everyone out. He is getting the other rescue teams to come. L Lewis, let's go. Uh, something's obviously afoot. Something dangerous, anyway. Nothing good. Oh, all the teams are gathered up here. Wow, look at all the Pokemon. Looks like they sent out to a lot of rescue teams for help. I've seen some pretty famous leaders from faraway places. That Shiftry, I wonder what he's planning to do with all these rescue teams. Can I get everyone's attention here? I, uh... It's not my style to get up in front of everyone like this, and... Sorry, this isn't the time for that. There's big trouble! Alakazam's team went underground, but they haven't returned! Wh what is that true? Yes, unfortunately, Alakazam led his team underground to quell Groudon, and that's it! We haven't heard anything from them, to be honest. We have no idea what became of them, and I'm using this ridiculous voice to make myself look political when I'm actually a big giant douchebag! No idea, how is that possible? This is Alakazam you were talking about! But they haven't come back, that's for real! That's right, and it sounds as if Groudon is out of our league! What if that? What is, what is that? Gra what is that? Tough. This Pokemon named Groudon. Why don't you go underground and see for yourself, huh? You gotta be kidding me. There's magma flowing everywhere underground. I, I'd burn up if I went anywhere like that. Quiet, please. Be quiet. There's no denying that it is dangerous underground. It is not a place where anyone can go. 
That's why I asked so many rescue teams to gather today. I propose that a special team be formed by choosing the best of the best. Who will step forward? Who among us will be the heroes to take on the challenges on the ground? Say, Lewis, this is a great opportunity. Let's go. Don't bother you guys. What's with you? Can you step aside? You guys have gotten a lot tougher, that's for sure, but there's plenty of tough, tougher Pokemon out there. <clears throat> Will no one step forward? I'll go. Damn, son! Whoa! It's B Blastoise! You mean Team Hydro's Roughneck Blastoise? Those water spouts on his back can rocket water so fast that it punches through, th through thick iron plates. It's rumored Groudon is a ground type. I am a water type, strong against the ground type. My hi hydro pump will put Groudon down in one shot. I'll join the party too. Whoa, it's Octillery. She's Team Constrictor's leader. She's known for persistent and clingy attacks. She ensnares foes with her tentacles, then headbutts them. She'd be nasty to face in any battle of endurance. Darlings, when I see a tough Pokemon, I want to tangle with them. Say, how about not forgetting? Say, how about not forgetting about me? Whoa, Golem! He's the most brutal out of Team Rumble Rock. His body, his body is hard rock. Uh, no, his body is rock hard. He's supposed to be able to withstand huge explosions without taking damage. If Groudon's awakened underground, that suits me fine. I'll use my rock throw to keep it buried underground. So I guess that's it, right? Oh, Blastoise, Artillery, and Golem. No one could no one could complain about your selection. We will have these three rescuers head underground. Yeah, good choice. You are presenting us. No, you are representing us. Make us proud. Let's go. Well, there they go. Um, well, what happened to... Alakazam uh, and, and his team. Save Alakazam's team. And that's are in deep trouble. See, they look pretty tough, eh? Let them handle things. Hmm. It can't be helped, Lewis. I wish we could have gone but too, but there's nothing we can do about that. Blastoise's team can go take care of things underground. We'll keep doing the best we can in our rescue work. Damn it! So we still can't go fight Groudon. We still have to do more rescue work! You've got to be kidding me! This is impossible! <laughs> um, you know what, I am going to end off the episode here and we'll continue on the next episode. So in the next episode, let's play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. We shall, I guess, sadly, um, do some more jobs in the next episode. And hopefully we will get a glimpse of what the next dungeon is going to be like. Because I don't think there's really that many rescue missions that we have to do in between this cutscene and going to the next dungeon. So anyway guys, until then, this is NDM saying thanks for watching. Take care everybody, see you in the next video. And goodbye. <laughs>